I'm at Grace Medical Home in Orlando speaking with CEO Stephanie Garris, who will share with us how the center provides quality health care to refugees and others in need. Thank you so much for having us here at Grace Medical Home. Tell us about yourself and the organization. Well, first, thank you so much for coming. We're honored to have you and for all you do in our community. Um, Grace Medical Home is a nonprofit medical practice for the low income uninsured. So we only see people who don't have any insurance, don't qualify for the Affordable Care Act, can't afford it, um, and are living at or below 200% of the federal poverty level, which for a family of four is around $50,000. So once you enroll as a patient, we're like a private practice doctor's office. People come as often as they need to to get well. We have 28 on-site specialty clinics and provide comprehensive whole person care. And preventive measures are really important because like I just did an interview on heart health and he said 90% of the cases he sees could have been prevented. So this preventive care is very important. You're exactly right. Only 3% only of our patients, so 97% of our patients, have never had a regular doctor's office, so they haven't had a place to go to focus on prevention and wellness, and that's precisely what we offer here. We offer all the preventive care screenings that are recommended based on age and gender. We also provide immunizations, um, you know, like you were getting at, heart-healthy wellness activities that can prevent um, serious chronic diseases that... Uh, not only will it shorten their life, but will be, you know, a, an incredible um, burden to our community. And I know we're talking about refugees as well. Some some services, nonprofits aren't able to take in refugees because they're undocumented, but you are. How are you able to provide that service? Well, we don't see anybody with insurance, so we have to raise every dollar that we spend. We're completely privately funded. And our criteria are, are you living in our community? And our patients have to prove that either with a address, a physical address, a bill, something like that. Um, are you working? Do you have a pay stub? Do you have a 1099? Things like that. We believe once they meet that criteria, they're living here, they're working, they're in school here, they're among us. And why aren't they entitled to the same level of care as anybody else? And so, uh, so that's precisely what we do. We don't ask immigration status. Um, we're not immigration lawyers. That's not who we are. But once they say that they're living here and they can prove it, um, we want to give them that highest quality of care. So um, we do track whether they're foreign born. That's all we track. Um, so some certainly are here legally, maybe tourist visas, things like that. Um, and some may have extended their tourist visa. You know, we're no, not a border state, so I don't think we have a, a huge influx of crossings and things like that. And so once they become a patient, we just want to offer them the highest level of care, get their chronic diseases under control, get them back to work. And what do you want to share with our viewers about what residents could do to make sure that they're doing their part to stay healthy? Oh, goodness. Well, um, isn't that the million dollar question these days? I mean, certainly, you know, watching what you eat and exercise and so forth. But I would say more than that, you know, especially now, how is your mental health? How are you feeling about um, you know, what's going on in the world around us. You know, we see anxiety and depression. Our mental health visits, we offer a, a robust mental health counseling program for our patients. Visits are up 36% between um, last year and this year. So what are you doing for that self-care and that well care? Yeah, and that mental health is very important and affects a lot of your other health issues that you may have, like high blood pressure and that's exactly right. In fact, about 25% of our patients have um, one or more chronic disease, diabetes, hypertension. Um, they're at risk for cardiovascular disease. And we know that that mental health component, you know, you need to be healthy in body, mind, and spirit to address some of the physical issues and the things that are needed to um, improve your health. So we want to walk alongside our patients, lock arms with them, empower them, let them know that they can do it. Uh, and they don't have the resources that somebody with insurance does. And so we're glad to offer that to them. Yeah, it's really great that you have a holistic approach. How can people find out about your services? How can they sign up and find out if they're eligible? Sure. It's all on our website, which is gracemedicalhome.org. Um, and we have information about how to become a patient. We are not a walk-in clinic. So um, once patients are pre-screened and meet those basic criteria that I shared with you earlier, um, they fill out the paperwork and, and we get them in as soon as we can schedule an appointment with their primary care provider. 
So it's all on our website. Um, but again, once they're a patient, they come as often as they need to to get well. Our patients come on average 11 times a year. That's a long time. Imagine going to a doctor or somebody else in the health services industry, you know, almost once a month. Uh, that shows how sick our patients are and how much they need our services. Yeah. Well, it shows also that they're taking care of themselves. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Which is very important for preventive measures, like we said. Yeah. Is there anything else I'd like to share with our viewers? How can they get involved, volunteer, donate? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we would love um, the community's involvement in so many ways. Uh, certainly donations, you know, as someone who has to raise the money for the budget and is responsible for that. I'm, I'm always going to say don donations are incredible. But also, we have tons of volunteer opportunities. Anybody with a Florida license um, can serve our patients. We have, again, 28 specialty clinics. But if you're non-clinical, we, you know, we have roles for you as well. Navigators, spiritual care, front desk, um, interpreters, um, answering phones, scanning. So lots of opportunities to volunteer. That's the only way we're able to do what we do is with the community support. And how could they stay in contact with your organization, social media? Yeah, newsletter? so we're on social media, um, Instagram, Twitter, um, LinkedIn. So yeah, we welcome um, uh, any and all ways to communicate with the public and sign up for our email lists and uh, go to our website and connect with us. We'd really love it. But thank you so much for all the services that you provide. It's greatly needed. And it also saves us costs in the county in the future when people are taken care of. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's very true. Um, we provide almost $7 million of, of the value of the care that our patients receive. We do a lot of prescription assistance programs. So we're able to get um, $3 million of donated prescriptions to our patients every year. So, um, so yeah, it's a really good value. And, and we welcome um, that support and rely on the community to help us to meet this need. You know, our patient population, they work in the top five industries, construction, service industries, retail, housekeeping, and healthcare. Those are, those are the backbones of the industry of our community. And if you work part-time or seasonal jobs, um, or you can't afford insurance that's offered to you, where are you going for that comprehensive whole patient care? Um, so we're, we're privileged to play that role in the community and welcome the community's involvement. Thank you. Thank you.